Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News, baby. We got like, what, five or six big stories for you today. Stuff out of Sega, a brand new game actually leaks for Nintendo Switch. Uh, we got an update for Nintendo Switch Online and so much more. Now before I hop into that news, by the way, you can go down. We have it all, uh, you know, linked through timestamps and all that. You can go through the chapters. Uh, we are giving away two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League. That's right. To enter, all you do is head to the link in the description or the pinned comment. To enter, I wish everyone luck. The winner will be announced during our live show for Prime Gaming Fest on June 9th at 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. Sorry, 9 a.m. Central Time. Man, that show's gonna be long. That Our Prime Gaming Fest runs from uh, June 9th through June 14th. It's gonna be awesome. Thousands of dollars in giveaways. Again, more details on this coming. I think actually uh, over the weekend or on Monday, we'll have our first major announcement about Prime Gaming Fest, so stay tuned for that. All right, that being said, let's get right into today's news. And the first story today deals with Nintendo Switch Online. We finally got a new game announcement for Nintendo Switch Online. It happened last night, and that is Kirby 64, the Crystal Shard is heading to switch one week from today on may 20th so yeah i think kirby 64 the crystal shards is one of the best kirby games to ever come out so i'm really pleased to see this coming to nintendo switch online obviously this will be part of the expansion pack because it's for the nintendo 64 uh but i, I don't know if it's the greatest kirby game of all time i actually think the recent one you know <coughs> The Switch Kirby game we just got uh, is actually the best Kirby game ever. But still, I'm really glad to see this coming. I know some people were like, oh, who cares? You know, this thing is uh, available, you know, through emulation. Guess what? So is everything on Nintendo Switch Online. But for those people that are subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online and the expansion pack, which according to Nintendo is most people on NSO in the United States have the expansion pack. So in the country we're actually hosting this in, most of the people watching probably have access to this. So enjoy Kirby 64 and the Crystal Shards next week. And uh, let's get into our next story. So a game leaked for Nintendo Switch in the most leaky of ways. We're not talking about uh, from someone on Twitter. We're not talking about gaming leaks and, and Reddit, you know, the gaming leaks Reddit. We're not talking about some forum, 4chan. We're actually talking about a retailer. This is kind of strange, right? When a retailer just fully leaks a game. It's happened before, of course. We've actually seen some of these leaks happen leading up to E3 in the past. And, well, we do have Summer Game Fest ahead, and maybe this is a leak from that. Uh, but a brand new game is coming to Switch from Ubisoft called Rabbids Party Legends. Uh, it's supposedly releasing on June 30th, according to the listing. And we found this out because it was accidentally sent live by Best Buy Canada. That's right. The good old Canadians gave us a little bit of a treat. Now, there's not a lot of details on this game at the moment. We do have box art for it, so it definitely is a legitimate thing. Uh, the Rabbit's Party Legends, if I had to guess, is, is just a, a, a typical Rabbit's Party game. Maybe it's a collection pack of all the prior Rabbit's Party games that we saw like during the Wii era. Uh, or maybe it's just a whole bunch of brand new stuff. I don't know. The Rabbit's have obviously surged a bit in popularity on Nintendo thanks to Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. And obviously, we have Mario Plus Rabbit's Sparks of Hope coming up. Uh, so, you know, hey, why not get another Rabbit's game out on Switch? Uh, yeah, that's a game we could look forward to. And it, I just want to see some footage of it. I presume it's a mini game fest and i have nothing wrong with mini game fest uh it can be a lot of fun if they're done well and hopefully this one is done well our next story we're talking about the mpd results which dropped today for the month of april 2022 and we're not going to go over quite everything uh, but i wanted to make a few notes here that that just matter for the whole of gaming uh number one the switch was the best selling system in the month of april just in terms of units sold so it sold more units than anything else on the market the xbox series uh systems so the s and x actually were the number two selling system in terms of units we've talked in the past about how microsoft is actually flooding the market with xboxes while you know playstation struggling to get playstation 5s on store shelves but that doesn't mean everything is bad for sony and playstation 5 because despite the switch being the, the number one selling in units despite xbox being number two in units the playstation 5 was actually the number one system in terms of pure revenue now this isn't pure profits just uh, you know they the system sell for 500 and 400 uh xboxes sell for 500 and and uh, 300 and obviously we know switch sells at 350 300 and 200 so it's not really surprising to see that playstation comes out on top in terms of revenue because they by far have the most expensive combination of systems out there so 
This is kind of a month where all hardware manufacturers basically could say, hey, we won. Because Xbox will be really happy that they're ahead of PlayStation 5. Uh, Switch, obviously, Nintendo's going to be really happy that they're still the number one selling system. And Sony's going to be happy that they are having the most revenue off of their systems. Again, revenue, not necessarily profits. But that's really, really cool. Also, we got to look, obviously, at the software charts. And I'm not going to go over the entire top 10. Uh, but I want to make a couple notes. Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga actually came in at the number one spot. Remember that massive Lego game? Really, really good on all platforms platforms including switch that's great uh, and i just want to make a couple notes for switch uh, nintendo switch sports which came out last month uh debuted at number five which is interesting because it actually fell behind kirby and the forgotten land that came out the month before so good on kirby staying super high on these charts now it is notable any nintendo software on these charts it's only physical that they have counted. They don't have any digital sales data. So including digital sales data, it's possible Nintendo Switch Sports is actually higher up. Because remember, Nintendo Switch Sports is actually cheaper digitally because it doesn't come with the accessory that you use on your leg that's optional. So yeah, I can see where Nintendo Switch Sports is actually more popular as a digital game than a physical. So it probably outsold Kirby overall, but doesn't really matter these are really good sales for everything i'm really happy to see lego star wars skywalker so i get its deserved number one spot uh it beat out other games like mlb the show and elden ring those are those are the other ones in the top three so really cool uh and let's get going into our next story because we got to talk about sega so everyone's been doing their financial briefings this week this is just how it goes everyone seems to do them around the same time everyone seems to have the same sort of timing with their fiscal reports and what's funny is sega actually well sega sammy i guess is the technical name of the company but we're just gonna go with sega uh talked about their future plans for like reboots remasters and super games because that's now a term we're, we're gonna be hearing for the next few years super games here's a direct quote uh from sega the core strategies of the new medium term plan center around digging deeper into key existing IPs like Sonic, Fantasy Star, Yakuza, Persona, and Total War, and offering these to global markets. We're also talking taking up the challenge of super games, quote, super games, within five years. So this is a long-term plan, you know, five years out. Also, given our large pool of IPs that enjoy strong global recognition, we will actively leverage past IPs and further develop them. That is, by means of remasters, remakes, and reboots, etc. Then, uh, this article I got it from says, Sega Sammy explains that its medium-term plan is to break out of the current situation and become a truly sustainable corporate group. They have labeled this plan beyond the status quo. The company has high ambitions for its upcoming super games, stating that the long-term aim is for each super game to bring in 100 billion yen, which is approximately $766 million over their lifetime. So each super game should get, you know, about to three quarters of a billion dollars in revenue every single time. So when I hear when I hear that, I'm thinking Super Games, aka the highest tier AAA games they release, whether they happen to be multiplayer, free to play, or if they just happen to be massive games. I honestly think they think Sonic Frontiers is probably one of those super games, if I had to guess. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I think this is a really interesting direction for Sega to go. I think that they are in a very precarious situation. I, I, they, they act like they're struggling when their actual profit margins look pretty good. So uh, maybe they're, they're being propped up a, a lot by the, the uh, obviously the pachinko machines. Yeah, I find it very strange that uh, they have to call these games super games. We have a term for that already. It's called triple A. But hey, whatever. Let's get into our last story. And whew, this is, a this is I, I don't understand Nintendo sometimes. I mean, I, I do and I don't. So Nintendo restocked N64 controllers, right? The ones for Switch. Uh, they restocked them on their website here in the United States. It's the first restock we've actually seen since N64 Online came out because they actually sold out of these N64 controllers before the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack launched. So this is actually the first restock. Man, that's like six months ago. 
the first restock of these N64 controllers. And they lasted less than 60 seconds before they sold out. Now, I don't know how many people were scouring the website during that 60 seconds. I don't know, uh, you know, how many there were available. Was there only 100 available? Was there 1,000 available? Was there a million available? And they just sold out like that. I have no idea. Obviously, it's hard to gauge because we don't know how many there were. What I can tell you is there weren't enough. We have an issue with... Nintendo being the sole retailer of their own controllers because the problem is their website slowed down so some people that had it in their cart couldn't check out and ended up not being able to get it because it was sold out. Uh, it lasted less than a minute and frankly it makes it extremely difficult to get a product that you want. I understand Nintendo, you know, it ties us into oh you got to be a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber to even get it that's why you got to get it through our website but who cares? Like if I'm Nintendo, who gives two flying shits if someone is a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber or not when they're buying a physical product that you're selling? If they want to buy the Nintendo Entertainment System controllers at their local Walmart without a Nintendo Switch Online subscription, why do you care? Why do you care? I, I, I legitimately want to know, why do you care? It, it shouldn't matter to you. A sale is a sale is a sale. And when you spread things out like you did with Switch across all these different retailers, like we're seeing this issue with Valve and the Steam Deck, right? You can only get it through Valve. And then it, it's so confusing and conflated. And it's one of the stupidest releases of a platform I've ever seen. And it does not get criticized enough. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a Nintendo fan. I actually want a Valve Steam Deck. It's just extremely frustrating what you have to go through to get one. I find this whole thing stupid because nintendo's basically doing the exact same thing without taking the pre-order aspect by only having a single store that you can get these through instead of spreading them out if they were spread out uh, at all retailers you know how much easier it would be for people that legitimately want these to actually use them not just collect them like it would be so much easier for me to walk into my local walmart and compete with less people to get it versus competing with millions of people online, refreshing your website, crashing your website, and not able to get. I, I, I'm very I'm, I, look. I understand that that this isn't a new complaint, right? They've been do they did this with the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, but it's just it, it's extra frustrating in this case because we haven't had a restock of the N64 controller since Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack launch. There hasn't been a restock. This is the first one. And very, very clearly, there wasn't that many of them. And I understand the whole um, pandemic. And yes, they actually use boards inside of these controllers. So there is going to be um, you know, limit at manufacturing. And maybe it's not a priority for Nintendo as they're priority manufacturing as many switches as possible. I understand all of those metrics. It's just frustrating. Like, if you were going to wait six months to restock, you might as well just held on to that stock and waited until you could double, triple, or quadruple that stock if you're only going to drop it on your website. Because when you get 60 seconds, that is just it's just not enough time. And I know, Nintendo, it's not your fault in so much that you don't understand what demand is for this product. Your market research team needs to do better to understand demand for that N64 controller. Of all of the classic controllers, it is going to be the most highly demanded one because everything the Nintendo uh, Entertainment System and Super Nintendo controller does, we can already really get from Joy-Con. We don't really need those controllers to enjoy those games in their original form. It is cool to have them, but we don't need those controllers. The N64, however, is such a unique controller device that a lot of people feel N64 games just don't feel right without one. Like they feel like we need this to really properly enjoy N64. It, it, it's frustrating that we've had to wait this long for a restock and it's frustrating that there wasn't enough there to make it last past 60 seconds. And the demand had to be crazy high because we know that your website already gets millions of views per month. So for your website, that's not necessarily crash, but to move as slow as it did and so many people miss out, I feel their pain. Uh, Nintendo, please do better. And I think you could do better by just saying, screw it. We're going to, you know, we're going to manufacture hundreds of thousands of these and just send them out to retailers. They're going to sell. I'll let you know, collector's value alone, they're going to sell. Don't worry about it, Nintendo. Okay. And you have billions in the bank. I think you can afford to take a slight risk that maybe they won't sell. Your website getting slammed enough should be proof enough. I don't want to see a restock of this thing until the fall. And I want to see me able to pick it up inside a retail outlet.
it's not gonna happen they don't care what i think anyways folks thank you guys so much for tuning in i am the robo jets from nintendo prime and you know what guys i'm gonna catch you in that next video uh, i will note there is no live stream tonight because the milwaukee bucks have game six going on you guys know what's up we may have a post game live stream uh about that and i apologize ahead of time I know it might actually cause some people to unsubscribe us doing some sort of NBA live stream. The whole point of that live stream isn't just so I can talk about the Milwaukee Bucks uh, and the Boston Celtics win or lose. Uh, it's because I also am promoting my new channel, Prime Informer. Uh, you want to check that out. I'll put a link down in the description. It is a sports channel. Uh, so I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but you know, I would be remiss if I didn't take advantage of the fact that I already have a platform here that I should be using to advertise it and just throwing up a community post here and there when I could do a little bit more, uh, doesn't make sense. So why not do a live stream, uh, similar to the type of live streams I would like to do on that channel eventually if it gets to enough subscribers, uh, and all of that. So I can unlock some of the live stream features. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.